My name is Greg King, and I'm uh, an, an alumnus here at, uh, uh, from Penn State, uh, Petroleum Natural Gas Engineering Department. Uh, I uh, graduated in 79 uh, and uh, worked for Chevron for 32 years. I uh, came back, and, and the, uh, they asked me to put this class together for you. Um, we're having a review session here for the first midterm. And I thought it would be, it would be better if, if we asked uh, one of your colleagues to uh, give, give the review. He'll, he's a senior, so he's uh, um, further along in his academic career than, than most of you are. Um, but I, I, I thought a, a senior would be a good, uh, good choice because he, he'll be able to tell you how this uh, material fits into your academic career and uh, give you insights on what's important for, for which uh, future classes you may be taking and what, what's not not important for, for those classes, uh, but may be important for other classes. So uh, let me turn it over to, uh, to Alex now. So as Dr. King said, my name is Alex uh, and I am a senior in PNG at the moment. I decided to take this course to reinforce my knowledge on the material and also it being an online class uh, gives me more flexibility with my schedule with being as busy as I am. And I feel like having the personal experience of being a senior would be valuable to um, the sophomores in this class, PNG or not PNG, to show like how this stuff is important, when you're going to use it, and why uh, knowing this information will be helpful for your future classes. So let's get started with question one uh, on the midterm review. So as you can see, we have uh, light oil we're going to be working with. So for your problem, you're going to have light oil and intermediate oil. The difference between the two really is the components that make up the oil. And so in general terms, lighter oil has more, has a greater capability for gas to dissolve, where like intermediate oil and heavier oil have heavier components, so it's more likely to stay in the liquid phase. Um, and so for this case, um, our temperature is going to be 120 degrees Fahrenheit. Um, and so in ranking, that's 580 degrees rank, uh, ranking. So you just add 460 to whatever your temperature is in Fahrenheit to get ranking. Um, our API of our oil is going to be 42. Um, the specific gravity of our gas is going to be 0 0.7, and our gas oil ratio is going to be 700 uh, SCF per SDB, which, stand, which just stands for standard cubic feet over st uh, standard st uh, stock tank barrel. Stock tank barrel, not standard stock tank barrel. But um, for this problem, we're going to be finding the compressibility of the oil, solution gas oil ratio, uh, oil formation volume factor, density of your oil, um, pseudo reduced pressure, uh, compressibility factor Z. Um, uh, gas formation volume factor, density of your gas, the viscosity of the oil, and the viscosity of the gas. So really this is going to be a PVT problem where we're given four bits of information and really we're going to expand it into a lot more using the correlations we've learned in class. So the first thing we're going to um, do is we're going to actually find what the specific gravity of the oil will be and that's going to be using equation 3.38 which is going to be the specific gravity of the oil at 60 degrees Fahrenheit equals 141 0.5 divided by um, your API of your oil plus 131.5. And so when you do this, you get your specific gravity of your oil to be 0 0.81556. So we'll just say 0 0.816 to make it simple. And so from here, we can find what our bubble point of our oil is. And this is really important because um, your fluid and your reservoir will act different based off if your pressure in the reservoir is above bubble point, below bubble point, or maybe even at bubble point. And you'll see with some of these correlations, some are used below bubble point, some are used above bubble point. And that's why it's really important to know um, which equation to use, which, which pressure you're at. So to find your uh, pressure for your bubble point of your fluid, you're going to be using equations 3.41 and 3.42. And so first, let's use equation 3.42 to find what CPB is, which is just a constant. And so equation 3.42 is going to be CPB equals your solution gas oil ratio, which is given, divided by your specific gravity of your gas, which is also given, so 0 0.83 power, and that's going to be multiplied by 10 to the power of 0 0.00091 000 times your temperature in Fahrenheit. So in this case, it's going to be 120 degrees. And an important note for this, notice we're using 120 degrees Fahrenheit here, not 580 degrees ranking. Some of your equations will be using Fahrenheit, some will be using ranking. So take note of that. Um, and in this case, it is isothermal, meaning your temperature is going to be the same throughout um, your this uh, process. 
And so that's just really important to note. So it's going to be minus. And then times your API of your oil, which is given, which is 42. And then doing that calculation, we get that CPB is going to equal 74.555. And using this um, in equation 3.41, which actually find your bubble point of your fluid in PSIA, which is going to be 18.2 uh, equals 18.2 times your CPB you just found minus 1.4. Which when you do this, it'll give you. All right, so important to note I just uh, realized is I made a mistake here. This should not be 700. This should be 900 for the light oil. Uh, and so because of that, the uh, CPB will not be 74.55. Um, let me recalculate that and see what I get. So CPB, after doing the calculation, will be 146.147. And plugging that right here into this equation to find out what the bubble point pressure is in PSI, we get that the bubble point is going to be 2,634.4 PSIA. And once we know what the bubble point pressure is, this helps us uh, use like what relationships for above bubble point and below bubble point. So this is, I'm gonna write that down what that is then. So PB is gonna equal 2,634.4 PSIA. Okay, and so for the next part, what we're going to do is uh, find the compressibility of the oil uh, above bubble point. So for that, we're going to be using equation 3.46a. Um, in this, yeah, yeah. So this will be CO equals 5 times what our RS value is, which we will need to find um, to do this. So um, well, I'll just put the equation down and then we'll use this after we find what our RS is at different pressures. So it'll be that plus 17.2 times our temperature, which I said it's isothermal and it's going to be in Fahrenheit for this equation. So you can just put 120 in right away um, and minus 1180 times the specific gravity of gas, which is going to be constant, which is 0 0.7. And then plus 12.61 times the API of our oil, which is 42. Um, and then it's going to be minus 1,433. And we're going to divide all that by one times 10 to the fifth times our pressure of interest. So in this case, let's do uh, pressures of, we're gonna do one pressure above bubble point, one pressure below bubble point. We're also gonna calculate the properties at bubble point. So we'll use a pressure of 4,000 PSIA. And we'll also use a pressure of say 2,000 PSIA. And then, so to find RS, what we need to do is for below bubble point, for our equation for RS, we need to use equation 3.44 and equation 3.45. And one important thing to note is your solution gas oil ratio, which is RS, is going to be constant above bubble point because above bubble point, gas is no longer going to be able to dissolve into the oil because there is no more free gas present. So once, uh, so what we assume is that gas is infinitely soluble in oil. So meaning once you're at bubble point and above bubble point, there will be no free gas in the reservoir. Everything will be dissolved in the oil, which is why your gas oil ratio will be the same um, above bubble point. Mm -hmm. So in this equation here for the compressibility of oil, you notice um, it's a function of uh, your RSL, your solution gas oil ratio, which in cases above bubble point will always be constant because we assume that um, above bubble point, there's no longer free gas in the reservoir. All free gas is actually dissolved in the oil, 
um, because we assume that gas is infinitely soluble in oil. And so for this reason, when you're at pressures above bubble point, the only liquid um, you'll find in the reservoir is like going to be like water or like oil or maybe some other type of liquid, but there will no longer be any free gas because all that gas will be dissolved in the oil. And so to find this R, and so the equation for solving for RS is actually gonna be a rearrangement of equations 3.42 and 3.41. Um, so you're gonna be solving for this uh, RSO. And so this PB that you see in equation 3.41, it's good for any pressures at bubble point and uh, also below bubble point. But like, as I said earlier, this uh, equation won't work for pressures above bubble point just because RS will uh, be a constant above bubble point. And so when you rearrange that equation, it turns into this. Pressure, which is gonna be your pressure of interest. So in this case, uh, we're gonna be doing uh, 2000 PSI. So, P. Plus. This is going to be times 10 to the power of, which is going to be your API of your oil, which is 42. And then this is all going to be divided by 10 to the power of 0 0.00091 times temperature, which is gonna be in Fahrenheit. So it's gonna be your 120 degrees Fahrenheit. Um, and so this whole equation will be to the power of one over 0 0.83. And then you're gonna multiply this by your specific gravity of your oil. And so when you do this equation for RS uh, at 2000 PSI, you should get Six hundred and forty-eight point one four five. This is going to be SCF per STB. And once you have this RS value, that you can then plug it in this equation to find what your compressibility of your oil is at um, pressure. Well, this equation is actually for pressures above bubble point, so you wouldn't actually pl be plugging this into here. Um, so, as we know. Um, the difference, with, we can use this equation because we already know RSO is going to be 900 at bubble point and above. Um, and so the difference here is going to be P. So we can just use this equation actually right now. So, so compressibility of the oil at 4,000 PSI is just going to be, uh, let's see, it'll be 1.208 times 10 to the negative 5. This will be one over PSI for the units, for the compressibility of the oil. Now to find the compressibility of the oil for uh, below bubble point, so in this case for the 2000 uh, PSI, we're going to be using equation 3.46B, which is going to be, so we're gonna find the compressibility of the oil at 2000. PSI. So with this equation, uh, it's going to be the natural log of the compressibility of oil um, equals a term, but we're going to exponentiate both sides to get CO by itself. So that turns into a pretty long equation, but so it's negative 7.633 minus 1.497 times the natural log of your pressure which in this case, like I said, we're going to be doing it for below um, 2,000. Uh, we're gonna be below bubble point, I mean. So we're gonna be using 2,000 PSI in this case. Um, and then plus 1.115 times the natural log of temperature, which it's gonna be 120 Fahrenheit. And then plus 0 0.533, the natural log of your API, which is going to be 42, 
plus 0 0.184 times the natural log of your RSOB, which is going to be your solution gas oil ratio um, at bubble point. So when you see that B subscript, that means at bubble point. So like you might see BOB, which means your uh, oil formation volume factor at bubble point. Using this equation for uh, 2000 PSI, we will get that the compressibility of oil will be equal to 0 0.00029543, and then units are 1 over PSI. So now we have the compressibility of the oil um, below bubble point at 2000 PSI and the compressibility of the oil above bubble point um, at 4000 PSI. And if you wanted to calculate what the compressibility of the oil is at bubble point, you can just use this equation right here. Um, and you'll get that your uh, bubble point uh, compressibility of your oil will be 1.955 uh, times 10 to the negative 5. And so for our next thing, we can solve for formation volume factor at pressures above the bubble point.